Tennessee State hasn't played like it to this point. In my mind, it's one of the top two teams in the league, uh, and they played like it tonight. I mean, they made shots better than what they've made them all year, um, which is not easy to do on the road. They're a tremendous rebounding team. Uh, they, they got playmakers. They got big guys. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a talented ball club. You know, Coach Ford's done a tremendous job with them, uh, first and foremost. I, I think offensively, we got off to a slow start um, after the initial two to three minutes of the game. You know, we, we had some lulls in there where, where we couldn't score the ball. Um, they got some separation. I thought we, we battled. We shot the ball really well in the second half. So, I mean, we're more than capable. Uh, just got off to a slow start. And I think, again, the lead that they had, that was a separation. You know, we, we, uh, they outscored us by six in the second half. Yeah. You know, we missed a lot of free throws. So, I mean, you really you played them even. It's just that first half got us tonight. Second half, you guys, I think, hit first five shots, but just couldn't get the stops at the other end. To yeah, exactly. I mean, and for us, we say trading baskets. That's what we don't want to do um, because we did. We started really well. Our energy was there, um, you know, but we just didn't get the stops on the other end to close the gap. Is Carlos more aggressive in the second half? Look like you kind of took your game to a, a maybe a higher gear in that second half. Yeah, I was trying to be more aggressive, just trying to bring energy, like on offensive end, just to build it up on a defensive end. So you switched up the lineup a bit last game and continued into this game. Is it just trying to find that spark, find that right combination? No, just 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 energy. I mean, really, that's all it is. Um, and like I said, Carlos has responded tonight. I mean, I, I thought he had a tremendous ball game in two halves. I really did. Um, and it's not anybody not necessarily doing anything wrong. It's not like I'm mad at this guy. He's pulling from the lineup and all that. Because generally, I don't change the lineup at all. Um, you know, but we were just looking for something a little different. Um, but again, not down on anybody. You know, and I, I thought, really everybody I thought that, that played did some good things for us in, in stretches. It seems like Tennessee State's a real physical team. They like to body up in the lane. Okay. They're really hungry for rebounds, too. It seems like that hurts it at various times throughout the game. Yeah, no, no question. I mean, they got us, I don't know, 12, 13 on the glass probably. They had 13, uh, 12 offensive rebounds. We did a really good job in the first half, I thought, um, in limiting their second chance points. You know, but again, their physicality and size, I, I think, wore us down. Um, and again, that's a credit to them. I mean, they're talented guys. But, you know, we've done a really good job on the glass this year, uh, especially in our last four to six games. Um, so that, that's something that, that we can do. Um, but again, they, they make you work for it, for sure. And John, you play a team like that, it's got that physicality and size, and you never led and you get behind a team like that. It's really hard to, to make it up. Well, especially right. when they're going to shoot the ball like that. You know, yeah. uh, we went into the game. Honestly, with the, the mindset of trying to force them into threes. Now, we lost them a couple times when they were open, but, you know, they made shots. Um, and when we, when we fouled them, they made free throws. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely hard to, to catch up at that point if you're going to make your shots at the level they made them um, and make your free throws. You know, and again, we didn't get enough second chance points, um, second chance opportunities, you know, because, again, they did a good job on the defensive backboards. One of the things you look at in a game like this is whether or not you got your guys back off and they fought really all the way to the end. Yeah, and, and we've done that. I mean, we've done that consistently. And, and again, I, I always give credit to the guys because it, it's not easy to be where we are. You know what I mean? You're 0-8 in your league. You've lost however many games we've lost in a row. Um, to continue to come back and have the confidence to push, shoot your shots, you know, and, and continue to defend and continue to try to have energy for your teammates is not an easy thing by any stretch. I mean, because we've got a competitive group. And guys are frustrated. I mean, because again, they, they want to win and they're working to win. I mean, we practice, but the guys come in before, come in after, come back at night, whatever it is, they're putting the time in. Um, and we're not getting rewarded. And we're not getting the results right now. It's part of our growth, you know, and again, part of establishing a culture and a foundation of doing things the right way and, and, and establishing work ethic. And we're doing it, you know what I mean? And eventually, that thing's going to tip our way. You know what I mean? When it tips, it's going to tip. Uh, and we'll, we'll stay positive, we'll keep pushing. And I, I really do. I like our group, I like the locker room. And uh, I mean, we got another another one that uh, again we got to go find a way to get on Saturday. Carlos, from a player's perspective, how difficult is the stretch that you're going through? John was just kind of alluding to the difficulties, the challenges of when you have a losing streak like this. Yeah, it's difficult, definitely mentally, and just we just got to stay together and grow together and just learn from all our mistakes and just keep working and staying in the gym, and just being positive about it. But it's just creating perseverance for us and building character throughout all of us and just helping us grow as a player. Are you still encouraged by the effort you see out there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We can't give up. Well, as a player, you never give up in a competitive 
locker room like that. You always have to fight for the man besides you, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. John, can I go right way left field? I was I was asking Dana about this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> about the lack of African American coaches, head coaches in the NCAA. I think it's about twenty three percent. Talk about that. Just how maybe how difficult it is for a, a man of color to get that job, get, hold on to that job, etc. You know, it's a tough nut to crack. I mean, I, and honestly, there's only 350 whatever jobs. You know what I mean? So it's tough for anybody to get it. I mean, it's it's tough for for a white guy to get it, or you know, uh, whatever nationality they are. It's hard to get a Division One job. I mean, it's a blessing. I'm very fortunate to be who I am. Um, now, it, it's it's a hard job once you get it. You know what I mean? Um, it's a blessing, but it's it's a grind. Um, but I mean, speaking specifically to your question, it is hard. Um, and it's not just in our profession. I mean, that's reflected in everything. I mean, every, every profession that you look at, every corporation, uh, you can go go down the list, Fortune 500 companies, how many are in management, how many are CEOs, how many are CFOs, how many are... So I mean, that, that's just our culture right now. Um, hopefully we can continue to break that trend. I mean, I, I think for myself and Dana Ford, um, there, there's some other younger African-American coaches out there. You know, we, we've got to establish ourselves um, and show that we can build. And I think that'll help the guys that are coming behind us. You know, I mean, I, I, I look to a guy like Conzo Martin, I, I spent seven years for and learned as much from him as anybody. Um, he, he's broken down doors. I mean, guys before him, obviously, but for me, he broke down doors and said, man, look, this guy can do it. Um, I was fortunate to work under him. So it's like, man, if Conzo can do it, then John can do it too, you know. I mean, and that's all it is. I mean, it's just a matter of, of shifting perception a little bit, um, and I, I think that'll come in time. I do. You're, this league has four out of twelve of the coaches are African American. Is is that even maybe a culture that the league is promoting, or do you think it's just happenstance? Um, maybe a little bit of both. I mean, I, I think um, with our league primarily being a Southern league, you know, uh, maybe that can be attributed to. A desire, you know what I mean, and, and from a recruiting standpoint, I, I think it is a benefit. Um, I, again, I'm not a guy to make things black and white, but I think in, in the southern states, you can you can gauge, you know, a benefit from having a, a, a guy in the African American in the head seat, you know. So maybe that's part of it. Um, hard to say, honestly. Appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Guys, thank you. thank you. Really appreciate your time. Hang in there. Yes, sir. Hey. No other way. John, what's the status of price?